So this area right here is already done. You can see it's nice and clean down to about here. There's a tiny bit. But here, I don't know how well you can see, it's a little bit rougher. And so what I'm going to do, if I can see here. This clay is really soft, so that's kind of helpful, I guess. It's kind of soft and sticky. So it actually holds on to the horse pretty well, which can be good and bad. So you can see right here, some of it has gotten onto the surface of the sculpture. So anywhere that that's on the sculpture, it will be reproduced in every casting. So I want to make sure that it's just perfectly clean and that these edges are all perfectly crisp. It's kind of just a little tedious process of going back and forth and cleaning and, and wiping off my tool every time it gets any, um, any clay building up on it. So it's not quite as important for it to be perfectly clean and smooth away from the horse, especially because after I, uh, after I have it all clean around the edges of the horse, what I'm going to do is go back in and basically I'll go like this to make little dimples that will then fit the two sides together nice and clean. Well, nice and something. I guess clean. Um, that way everything stays aligned perfectly and can't get misaligned. So another thing I'll do if I get some on the area away from the very edges is I'll just take a Q-tip and I can kind of wipe it down so that it's nice and clean. So this is the really tedious part for me of mold making. The the first step was to um, figure out where I want my mold lines to go, and I don't I don't draw them on the horse anymore unless it's really complicated. And this one's pretty simple. I can just kind of see where they're supposed to go and and just match that up. Um, so it's it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge, but it's fun. I like doing it. I like making molds. Um, this is, of course, a very small mold. It's um, four inches in this dimension and three inches in this dimension. It'll be my mold box, which is right here, is going to be two inches tall. The, the actual mold will be a little bit thinner than that, probably about an inch and a half, inch and three quarters. Um, so here you can see that that like ridge of clay. That all needs to be clean and sharp. And ideally, the edge of the clay line will be perpendicular to the surface of the horse. That's not always possible. Um, and here, it's act the clay is actually overlapping the sculpture, which you definitely don't want. It'll make a really wide seam there because I won't be able to get um, silicone in there. So, like here on his forelegs, I can't make the seam go straight off of his forelegs because I want that sideways seam there. So it's a little bit trickier, um, but it'll it'll work. I'll refine that some more as I work my way around the horse. I started on his back just because that's usually the easiest spot to, to start and get things lined up. And you can see that nice crisp clean line where he's just laid into it versus how it looks on his mane where it's rougher and hasn't been smoothed and sealed in yet. And by sealed I don't mean like spray sealant or anything. I'm just getting that that clay sealed tight up against his body so that the silicone can't leak down underneath him and and leak around to the other side. If it does, it it makes a problem. So it it, it can be fixed in mold making, but I try and make things as simple for myself as I can. Do as few steps as I can. Um, this right here, this little little bit of clay is actually intentional. I found a tiny tiny pinhole there while I was molding him up and instead of pulling him out to fix it, I'm just filling it with a tiny bit of clay and making it nice and smooth and uh, it'll work just fine. I mean you could sculpt in this clay, just it's really soft. This is, um, the clay is, oh it's the softest one from Reynolds Advanced Materials, it's Sculptex. Sculptex Soft. Um, I would maybe try the medium next time, but I have a lot of the soft, so I use it. It's reusable. It's non-hardening, sulfur-free. Um, it's a good, it's a good material. I haven't done much sculpting in it at all, just because I have other stuff I use to sculpt in right now, um, and because I 
mess things up. So having a firmer sculpting material is better for me because I tend to like bump them and stuff and I would quickly destroy, sorry, that's my camera was off of there, looking at what I'm doing, not at my camera. I would quickly destroy a soft sculpture just because I'm a kind of clumsy sometimes. So yeah, this is uh, the really tedious step of mold making. I'll end up going around the whole horse at least twice to make sure I've gotten everything sealed in really nice. But once I do, be ready to pour rubber and, well, first I have to put my little, my little box. It kind of fits around and it'll slide down on and then I'll seal the edges of that clay up against my, uh, my plastic box that I made here. And then I'll pour rubber in, let it cure, flip it over, pull all the clay off, um, spray uh, mold release on it so that the two halves don't stick together, and pour the other half and be good to go then, and once it cures. So this is one of the intermediate steps of mold making.